Ready for another edition of Warpaint TV? Brought to you by Cotman Transmission, Olathe, Kansas, 913-768-1555. Welcome back to WarPaintIllustrated.com's WarPaint TV, Monday, September 27, 2010, a day after the Kansas City Chiefs have gone 3-0 and at bye week. Nick, you called it four days ago. You said the Chiefs would win 31-14. to You know, all the other prognosticators, the Chris Berman said the 49ers would win 17-16. to Kent Babb had the 49ers winning 10-6. Come on, Kent. Hey, you're in the locker room. Tell us what you saw to make you think the Chiefs would come out and win 31 to 10, which well, they did. I just thought they were due for a, a, a laugher victory. I mean, I just thought the progression of game one, actually it started with the last preseason game, then game one against the Chargers, game two at Cleveland, showing they can win on the road. And I just felt the 49ers with Vernon Davis opening his big fat mouth and saying, hey, you know, I guarantee a victory. You're 0-2. You know, when Frank Gore says they're the better team than the New Orleans Saints, who they lost to a week ago Monday night, they weren't. You know, you don't. You, you need a huge dose of humble pie. And I thought the Chiefs' uh, humility, I guess, in the locker room after going 2-0 was something I was really impressed with. And all week in practice, it was, hey, you know, we're not there yet. We're not a good football team yet. We're not taking anything for granted. You know, they have that. They've got a swagger. Uh, but they're not getting too high, and I don't think they're going to get too low. Even if they, you know, with two tough road games at Indy and at Houston, it's going to be very difficult for this team to win uh, one of them. You know, I, I think there's a chance, but I think everybody expects them to go 0 2. But, you know, they don't care about any of that. What do we have to do this week to prepare the, for this team? And I thought their demeanor after the, after the game uh, on Sunday was even, even better. You know, this is a great win. We're not quite there yet. We still have some things we need to work on. We're not a good football team yet. We have to improve. And uh, I, I, they're a work in progress, and the fact that they're winning is just an absolute bonus. You know, talk about Todd Haley. Talk about the, the coaches. Talk about the fourth and one at the 50. There's no score early in the second quarter. At the beginning of the second quarter, it's fourth and one at the 50. Chiefs look like they're going to punt. They run the offense back on the field. San Francisco take a timeout, then they run it back. It was probably the funnest chess match I've ever seen at Arrowhead. Talk about what the coaches have done, you know, to get the spark, right. to get the team to explode like they did. Well, they're having fun out there. I mean, you can tell. You, you know, you, you, we watch it from the press box, and you watch it from the stands. The players are having fun. They're having fun playing football. They're, they're counting on one another. They're relying on each other. It's just it's a completely different atmosphere, and it starts with the head coach. I mean, I didn't think Todd Haley, Todd Haley was going to make year two. I mean, you know, we talk about this on our podcast up on com. You know, of all the changes that were made and all the additions, you know, you would think that this is the one thing that they would do. They'd bring in another coach. But, you know, Scott Peely stuck with Todd Haley. This was his guy. And uh, he's done a good job in checking his own ego and saying, hey, Romeo Cornell, you run the defense. Charlie Weiss, you run the offense. That's a big thing for, uh, for a guy who's a head coach to, to check his ego enough to allow that to happen. And the proof's in the pudding. You look at the stability that Cornell's brought to defense and the, uh, the stability Weiss has brings to the offense. I mean, the offense has got a lot of work to do, let's face it. I mean, you know, the, they've got the two-headed monster in the running back. The wide receivers still aren't getting off the line of scrimmage. And Matt Castle is still Matt Castle. Though he proved his critics wrong, he had a great game. He needs to play well in the first half and play consistent in the second half. When he does that, I think this offense is going to be firing on a lot more cylinders than they are right now. We'll be right back after a brief message from our great friends at Cotman Transmission. My experience at Cotman was phenomenal. They worked on my car while I waited. I was in and out in less maybe like 30 minutes. When you're dealing with your car, you drive it every day. You need someone that you can trust to work on it. It's a good experience. I'm a Cotman customer for life. I trust Cotman. He's my Cotman man and he keeps me rolling along. All right. Uh, Talk about Dexter McClexter. Wow. In the second quarter, what he did with the Chiefs offense, they kept running that option, inside handoff, the 
touchdown pass. Talk about now that he's part of this offense, what do you feel like he can contribute going into, you know, the second half or, you know, the rest of the season? Well, I think it was good. This was his most productive game. And, and what Charlie Wise did is he set the 49ers up for the flea flicker in the third quarter. They ran a wildcat formation. They ran a reverse out of the wildcat formation. They used McCluster. Of course, McCluster has the big touchdown play, you know, it, which came at a really critical time because the, the Chiefs had gone down the field, uh, Castle through the interception, through the out, and it was an end to Dwayne Bow. Got mixed up there, came back through a dart to McCluster, and the only place it could have been, or else it would have been intercepted for a pick six. Uh, makes the play, but you know you love this kid. You love the fact he's in the Wildcat formation. You can see what he do. They lined him up at running back. Goes forward on fourth and one. Uh, you know it, is the guy that makes the play to get the first down. So uh, you know McCluster, Tony Moiaki. You know even John Asamoa got in. He's going to be the third tight end. He's going to be the smash mouth tight end that this football team really needs. And uh, the young kids are playing well. But uh, uh, McCluster for me has been outstanding, but uh, to me, the star of this offense from the rookie class is Tony Moyaki. That wow. catch, wow. that catch was, uh, it was not only Otis Taylor-esque, oh, if, it, if you, any of you are old enough to remember the Washington Redskins game at Municipal <laughs> Stadium, the one-handed catch with the uh, Redskins cornerback had his arm pulled behind his back and he still caught the ball. Tony and Gonzalez made a couple of those catches, but I'm telling you, the ball was thrown high. It was thrown in the only place it wasn't going to get intercepted, and you're thinking this is in the back of the end zone in the cheap seats where you're sitting. You know, that, that thing could have gone up to the 20th row, but he sticks <laughs> his paw up there and says, I'm going to catch this ball, comes down with it, lands his shoulder inbounds with about two inches to spare from the back end line. Um, you know, this kid is something special. He really is. Now, I'm not going to put him in Tony Gonzalez's class because he's got a lot to show, but he heads into the National Football League with better hands, uh, better blocking ability, and I think he's a better route runner than Tony was his rookie season. It took Tony some time to really kind of adjust to the phases of the NFL you need from a tight end, though he's going to set all the records, Hall of Famer, first ballot, no question. But Tony Miller, I could give this offense something that it didn't have last year, a guy who can catch the ball over the middle. Uh, major props to Todd Haley for giving Tony Muaki the chance to. Yeah, we, uh, Kirk Ferenz, the uh, Iowa head coach, uh, Pioli and friends are, are, are very good friends. No question. I mean, he didn't play a lot in college because he was injured, but uh, he was the heart and soul of that Iowa Hawkeye team, and the Chiefs moved up in the third round, and uh, they may have gotten themselves a steal. Definitely. And w thinking about Tony Gonzalez his first couple of years, he played behind Ted Popson because, you know, Marty didn't want to throw him to the Wolves right away. So it's great to have uh, Tony Miyake, you know, get a chance to play. And, you know, like you said, that catch right in front of me, incredible, incredible. All right, our last point I want to talk about before uh, we end today's show is the defensive line. Tyson Jackson should be back in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Sean Smith, incredible on that side. And Wallace Gilbert, who's, you know, backing him up. He had an important sack last week at that position. What do you feel they will do at that spot when Tyson Jackson comes back? Well, it's a great problem to have. I mean, it's a blessing in disguise that Tyson Jackson was injured because they moved uh, Sean Smith to the outside. You know, he's he's got that uh, mentality. You know, some some players think he's a dirty player on the outside. Two, two weeks in a row, he's kind of you know, maybe done something he's not supposed to do. But that's life in the trenches in the National Football League. You either be tough or you get out and you go on the sidelines. And Sean Smith brings an attitude to this defensive line that they haven't had really since Jared Allen was here. Not I'm comparing him sack rush rise, but, but as far as a character, a guy who's stable, a guy that uh, gets in the faces of his players and, and backs up his, act, his words with his actions. So I think this is a good problem to have. I mean, Glenn Dorsey has played very well. I've dogged him more than anybody in this town. Um, and, and, and he's doing what he has to. Ron Edwards had a good game. I think what you'll see, I think you'll see Sean Edwards possibly move back to the middle because of his ability to penetrate. Ron Edwards may be a guy that comes in and fills in as a backup, but they'll move him you know, with Tyson Jackson and Wallace Gilbert, who seems to be the guy that comes in in the third and fourth quarter to give everybody a rest and comes in and, and does great. What I thought was an absolute weakness for the football team has turned into one of its greatest strengths because, again, under Romeo Cornell, this defensive line don't expect sacks, space seat. Be solid against the run. Uh, get a guard. Get a center. Get a tackle. Get him on your hip. Occupy two guys. And, and so far, they've done it. I mean, just the job Romeo has done in, in particular. After three games, no question, Romeo Cornell is the MVP of this football team. You heard it here first from Chiefs insider Nick Athen. Once again, I'm Shane Williams with Warpaint TV. The Kansas City Chiefs are 3-0, and got a two-game lead. Let's enjoy bye week. Let's celebrate. Until next time, keep it right here at WarpaintIllustrated.com. 
Don't miss another edition of War Paint Illustrated the Magazine. To get your subscription today, call 888-979-0979. That's 888-979-0979 or check out warpaintillustrated.com.